Hello, in today's episode, I will talk about connecting an external EPROM memory to the ADC31 microcontroller, saved in the external EPROM memory 27C64. The ADC31 microcontroller doesn't have the internal program memory. To connect the external EPROM memory with the 8051 microcontroller, we use data and address buses. The data line is 8 bit, so it has 8 lines. Address bus usually has more than 8 lines, their exact number determines the capacity of EPROM memory. The point is that memory is an array, each cell has an address. If the organization of this table is 16 columns, then the lines will be addressed 0000, 0010, 0020 and etc., and columns from 0 to F. If the memory capacity was 16 bits, mean 2 bytes, 16 address lines would be used. To address 32 bits, mean 4 bytes, it would be 17 address lines needed. But, in practice there isn't done in this way. The address bus lines are organized inside the memory that there is a decoder for every 16 lines output of columns and fewer control lines input, so four encoded lines are decoded to choose one of 16 columns. The memory capacity determines the number of rows, and so, for a 16-bit capacity, five coding lines are needed. However, five lines are two states of the address decoder, in effect a possible 32-bit capacity. Two lines of the decoder input are four possible output states, it means the capacity of 64 bits 8 bytes. In practice, the memories have a larger capacity. The Abram 27C64 used a capacity of 8 kilobits, it means 8192 bits. To obtain such a capacity, an array of 16 columns and 512 rows should be organized. 512 lines of the output of the address decoder create 9 input lines, this is due to simple operation. On binary numbers, 2 power 9 equal 512 lines, a 512 rows multiplied by 16 columns will give 8192 array cells or bits. In total, 9 plus 4 column lines give 13 bits, which are needed to address. The ADC31 microcontroller has 4 ports of 8 pins, in total, 32 I.O. lines, 2 ports are used for addressing, means 16 bit. Port 0 is complicated because it can interpret both data and address bus. 8 data bit and 8 bit of address appear at different times on the pins of this port. The P2 port only interprets the address lines, the microcontroller controls the A, L, E, and P, S, E, N signals to distinguish this information. Information on address lines A0 to A7 appears alternately with information on data lines D0 to D7. A0 to A7 are less significant bits. Port P2 exposes more significant bits of address A8 to A15. Do you remember the episode, which I discussed the simplest program for the 89S51 processor with an internal program memory? In this case of microcontroller, simple program is stored in his internal memory in pin E8, mean external axis, is connected to 5 volts. If the internal memory is too small, you can turn off it, and use only, external, memory. Then the E8 pin connect to ground. You must do the same for the processor ADC31, which has no internal memory. The EA pin must be connected to the ground. In the external memory of the EPROM, the program is saved as a sequence of instructions and parameters. The microprocessor takes the first command after turning the power on. First, it sends the address, then get the data found in this address. To address the cell, the microcontroller pins connected to the address bus assume states representing a 16-bit number. This number is the address. The first address after switching on the power supply is 0000. 
so all port 0 and port 2 pins go into a logical zero state. A0 to A7 addresses lines are not directly connected to 27C64 memory. The address latch, 74HCT573 standing in the way. Therefore, just after the binary numbers is exposed on the address bus, the microcontroller sets the A, L, E control signal to low, which activate address latch and passing lines A0 to A7 to the external EPROM memory. The memory at this moment is ready to expose the 8-bit value stored in address 0000 to data bus D0 to D7. This is due to the 8-bit column organization. However, in order for the microcontroller to read the command stored in program memory, it must change the A, L, E signal to high, and then allow the 27C64 memory to send the command over the data bus. It uses for this the second control signal, PSEN, means status enable program. When the PSEN signal becomes zero, the EPROM expose the command bit stored at address 0000 on the bus D0 to D7. It happens in a very short time. Both ALE and PSEN events are clock signals, but ALE has a falling slope earlier, therefore an address appears on the bus earlier. Next is seen falling edge of PSEN signal, and then the data reading is possible for the processor. This happens beyond the user's knowledge. Addressing operations after switching on the power and setting up the control signals appear automatically. The next addresses are incremented sequentially from zero or take the values contained in the program. This knowledge is not necessary for the programmer. However, in reverse engineering or hacking area it becomes very useful. The data analysis of simplest program turning the lead on based on EPROM memory will be carried out in the next episode. Thank you for watching and subscribing.